Well, good morning. Glad to welcome each of you on this 14th Sunday uh, of the season of Pentecost. And uh, to let you know that we celebrate uh, the Lord's Supper each week, we invite all who are baptized Christians who have expressed a faith in Christ and his love for us to be a part of communion. We'll describe how that happens, but it's simply a matter of coming forth at the time, taking a little pre-filled cup that has a wafer on top, return to your seat, and then we'll commune together uh, at that point. Uh, we're glad you're here. Though we're few in number, uh, I guess the word is that wherever two or three are gathered, there we be, and there the Lord is with us. So uh, I'm thankful for your faithfulness. Different people have different situations uh, that prevents them from being here, and uh, we'll get updates on those things uh, during announcements at the end. So uh, I invite you to stand, if you would, and turn to your bulletin for our call to worship. And we respond uh, responsibly. God guides the humble in what is right and teaches them his ways. Humility is the fear of the Lord. Its wages are riches and honor in life. Wisdom's instruction is the fear of the Lord, and humility comes before honor. Let someone else praise you and not your own mouth, an outsider and not your own lips. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of low position. Do not be conceited. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. And let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Gracious God, have mercy on us. We confess that we have turned from you and given ourselves into the power of sin. We are truly sorry and humbly repent. In your compassion, forgive us our sins, known and unknown, things we have done and things we have failed to do. Turn us again to you and uphold us by your spirit so that we may live and serve you in newness of life through jesus christ our savior and lord amen in the mercy of almighty god jesus christ was given to die for us and for his sake god forgives us all our sins as a called and ordained minister of the church of christ and by his authority I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, have mercy. Help save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Please join me as we pray together our prayer of the day. O Lord, you have told us what is good, and this is what you require of us, to do what is right, to love mercy, and to walk humbly with you, O God. Today we choose to walk humbly with you. We choose to live by your Holy Spirit and to follow your lead. Help us to hear you clearly, 
For we do not want to walk by pride or self-sufficiency. We want to walk with you. Amen. Please be seated. I've chosen an old hymn. I hope it will be familiar to you and uh, to share with you this morning. O God of mercy, God of light. O God of mercy, God of light, in love and mercy infinite, teach us to as ever in your sight to live our lives in you. You sent your Son to die for all, that our lost world might hear your call. Oh, hear us lest we stray and fall. We rest our hope in you. Teach us the lesson Jesus taught To feel for those his blood has bought That every deed and word and thought May work a work for you for all our kindred, boy and, and wide, since Jesus Christ for all has died, grant us the will and grace provide to love them all to you. first of three readings today is from Second Chronicles. Uh, rarely do we read from that, but uh, the text I've chosen for today and the theme for our service being of humility uh, is found in part in here. And it begins in the seventh chapter at the twelfth verse. Then the Lord appeared to Solomon in the night and said to him, I've heard your prayer. And I have chosen this place for myself as a house of sacrifice. When I shut up the heavens so that there is no rain, or command the locusts to devour the land, or send pestilence among my people, if my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and I will forgive their sin, and I will heal their land. Now my eyes will be open, and my ears attentive to the prayer that is made in this place. For now I have chosen and consecrated this house, that my name may be there forever. My eyes and my heart will be there for all time. And as for you, if you walk before me, as David, your father, walked, doing according to all that I have commanded you, and keeping my statutes and my ordinances, then I will establish your royal throne as a covenant with, as I covenanted with David, your father, saying, there shall not fail you to man a rule of Israel. The word of the Lord. And thanks be to God. A reading from Romans in the 12th chapter. And Paul writes, I appeal to you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind that you may 
prove what is the will of God, what is good, what is acceptable, and what is perfect. For by his grace given to me, I, I hid everyone among you, I bid everyone among you, not to think, my eyes are getting blurry, sorry, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith which God has assigned him. For as in one body we have many members, and all the members do not have the same function, so we, though many, are one body in Christ, individually members one of another, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, let us then use them, if prophecy in proportion to our faith, if service in our serving, he who teaches in his teaching, he who exhorts in his exhortation, and he who contributes in liberality, he who gives aid with zeal, and he who does acts of mercy with cheerfulness. This is the word of the Lord. And I invite you to please stand for the reading of the Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew in the 23rd chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. Then said Jesus to the crowds and to his disciples, The scribes and Pharisees sit on Moses' seat, so practice and observe whatever they tell you, but not what they do, for they preach, but do not practice. They bind heavy burdens, hard to bear, and lay them on men's shoulders, but they themselves will not move them from their finger. They do all their deeds to be seen by men, for they make their phylacteries broad and their fringes long, and they love the place of honor at feast and the best seats in the synagogue and salutations in the marketplace and being called rabbi by men, for you have one teacher and you are all brethren. And call no man your father on earth, for you have one father, who is in heaven, neither be called masters, for you have one master, the Christ. He who is greatest among you shall be your servant, and whoever exalts himself will be humbled, whoever humbles himself will be exalted. The gospel of our Lord Jesus, and praise to you, O Christ. I invite you to be seated. And let us pray. O Lord God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations upon our hearts, be acceptable to you, O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. I have in my lifetime more than once been in the presence of greatness. I never shook the hand, though, of a king or a queen or for that matter of a president or a dignitary, yet I have been in the presence of greatness. I've been invited on occasions where the influential and the prestigious have spoken. I've heard marvelous oration from great speakers. I've stood in a crowd and I've watched greatness unfold before us. The true mark of greatness does not lie in the prestige and the might and the influence of the famous and powerful, but it lies in the humble acts of kindness and love toward one another and how we regard the least of these. The great are those who do not worry over how low they must stoop or how inconvenient they might be by another's actions. They are those who seek a need and they act. The only reward may possibly be a simple thank you, if at that. They act not for the sake of self, but for the glory of God 
and for the betterment of their neighbor. Today I'd like to talk with you about humility. I have been around Christians my whole lifetime, and I've seen it all. I've seen the good and the bad and the ugly among us. Let's begin with a definition. What is humility? Why is it important for us who have chosen to follow Jesus? A definition. Humility is the quality of being modest, reverent, even politely submissive, never being arrogant, contemptuous, or rude. Let's also be clear of what humility is not. William Temple, writing in a little booklet and called Christ in His Church, writes this. Humility does not mean thinking less of yourself than of other people, nor does it mean having a low opinion of your own gifts and blessings. It is freedom from thinking about yourself one way or the other at all. In other words, being highly thought of far surpasses thinking highly of yourself. From Proverbs 25, do not put yourselves forward in the king's presence or stand in places of greatness, for it is better to be told, come up here, than to be put lower in the presence of the noble. This was practical advice that was given by King Solomon as to how we should approach greatness. Years later, Jesus makes humility as a mark of the servant's life. The Apostle Paul, now here's an interesting guy. If you read Paul's epistles, this guy thinks pretty well of himself. He boasts of his faith and he boasts of much more. But he was not backward when it came to humility. He was always reminded of his rightful place by his relationship with Christ who was deep buried in his heart. To the Corinthians, Paul wrote, I am the least of the apostles. And to Timothy, he writes, I am the foremost of sinners. I have several points I'd like to make. Number one, a, hu a humble person knows their need for God. We may not want to admit it, but we all stand on common ground. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's the reality of this human journey. Because of sin, we might be lost forever, but for God's depth of love that we have seen in his son Christ. I'm reminded of a conversation I had a number of years ago with a friend of mine who was in my Rotary Club. Well, he was visiting that week. He was a man who had retired from being a judge for probably a good 25 years. And he did his job with few problems. After retirement, he went to a small Caribbean island and became a magistrate on that and enjoyed the tropics, which was pretty cool. But he had finally retired once again, and he was visiting clubs again. And to the best of my knowledge, I think most of his career had been unmarked by any corruption or controversy. Having seen him, I asked about him, and him knowing that I was a clergy person, this is how I responded about how life was for him. He said, well, I'm doing pretty good, but I'm working on my sinning. How many of us are not working on our sinning? Luther had something to say about everything. And Luther's remark about our sinning is that it is a constant, constant effort to deal with. It is our daily struggle. As we go to God, as we repent of what we've done, and we work on it, and we start all over again. It suggests us being conscious of our personal weaknesses, a commitment to facing them head on with the intention of changing and of seeking help. And that part of seeking help is pretty significant because God has opened himself to us to be of constant presence and help for us in times of trouble, in times of joy, 
whatever life may bring. You may remember an author by the name of Alex Haley. He wrote the epic Roots. On his office wall, he had a picture that was quite interesting. And it was that of a turtle that was sitting on the top of a fence post. And he knew that he needed some help. And he had gotten there, not on his own. We all are beggars before the Almighty, with our hands outstretched, and who in love with outstretched arms are welcomed into God's mercy and God's grace. Do we know our need for God? One point of humility. Two, a humble person doesn't expect the best for themselves, but is willing to give their best. So let me speak to those of you who really want to serve the Lord. And I like to make the assumption that's each and every one of us. Like me and a few others out there, including our beloved departed Wayne, who served as our organist, we all soon realize that serving in the kingdom of God as a pastor, as a church musician, as a volunteer, you're never going to get rich by world standards. But the joy and the pleasure is derived from giving richly of yourself. And along with that, people will, I think, generally expect the best from you. For the humble, it's not about the getting. It is about the giving. This is the example that Christ has given for us, his servants. As your pastor, I have been provided for in such a way that Benita and I are comfortable. We have what we really need for living a great life. We are blessed. But the greatest riches I have found and received in my life have been the gracious love and the support of those whom I am privileged to serve and minister with. I've heard horror stories of how some pastors have been treated, how they've been neglected, how they have been criticized extremely, how they've been offered little or no support, and that grieves me greatly. Thank God in my 45 years of ministry that has never been the case. We know what the plight of the early disciples of Jesus was. Each went forth in their own way and served in Christ's stead, and each died a martyr's life. They sacrificed much for the things that were precious and that were dear to them. In true humility, they offered their best, knowing that the best was yet to come, the gift and promise of the kingdom of God, which is forever. You probably know the story of Mother Teresa. Here was a woman who gave up prestige, who gave up a house, a home of wealth, a privilege in her society, and she served those who had very little, who were most certainly the least of these. The best she gave was her commitment to love the loveless of the world and to do so with the richest spirit of care and love that she could offer. And she did. She did until her death. Now hers is the kingdom forever. The humble person places the other before the self. Our motto from Rotary, are there any Rotarians in here, past or former, is, what's our motto? Service, service above self. God showed us that true path of humility in the person of Jesus who emptied himself out completely for the sake of others' well-being. His is a model that one is to consider what is more important than me, but another. It is not personal gain. It is not personal glory. He called us to inconvenience ourselves for those who are most inconvenienced of all in this world. In humility, Jesus knelt at the feet of his servants, and he served them in love. He is the master who became servant. It was to model 
his expectation for you and me. In true humility, let no one consider themselves better than the least of those in their midst. Third, a humble person is willing to go the extra mile rather than trying to do what is needed to get by. And here's an example that comes from just a week or so past. When Hurricane Laura came ashore at Port Charles, Louisiana, there was a hospital that had a NICU unit, neonatal, with 19 babies that were on respirators. They couldn't move them, or they did try to move them, but they needed those who would stay behind. The nurses chose to do so. One among them was a young woman who bid farewell to her husband told him to go inland to safety, she remained behind. She was expecting their first child that could have been delivered during that storm, but she chose to remain with the others. All 19 of those little ones survived that hurricane, and the young lady's response is she would do it again in a heartbeat, thinking not of herself, <clears throat> but thinking it was good for the sake of those most needful. Fourth, too many people today, I think, feel that they are entitled just because they themselves might be in a bad situation or just because they're American or they are among the living and breathing. Why should we be handed anything in life when we have already been gifted by God with that life? And what does God expect that we make our best efforts ourselves to certainly help ourselves and rely on the humble service of others to care in need for each other? Haven't you noticed that the persons who, truly res uh, who we truly respect for their humble walk in life have forsaken sometimes privilege and honor that they might be due? They aren't looking for accolades and recognition, but are very intentional about giving of their all. Here's an example. Booker T. Washington was a great man. He had been called to be president of Tuskegee Institute. When he arrived in that community, he decided to take a walk through the prestigious white neighborhood. He was stopped by a lady who asked if he would like to make a dollar chopping wood. Well, she didn't have a clue who she was talking to, so he worked. For several hours, he worked. He stacked the firewood by the fireplace, he collected his pay, and he went his way. Well, the little girl of the household saw who it was. She knew who it was, and she told her mother who it was. The next morning, the embarrassed woman went to see Mr. Washington in his office at that institute and apologized to him profusely. And this is what he said. It's perfectly all right, ma'am. Occasionally I enjoy a little manual labor. Besides, it's always a delight to do something for a friend. She shook hands warmly with him. She was assured him that his meek and gracious attitude had truly endeared him to her, and she would work on his behalf in what way she could. So not long afterwards, she showed her admiration by persuading some of her wealthy acquaintances to join her in donating thousands of dollars to the Tuskegee Institute. Five. The humble person considers the greater good and sacrifices self-interest and needs for that good instead of sacrifice, and instead sacrifices for the other. Once Abraham Lincoln got caught up in a situation where he wanted to please a politician, gain their favor, and the politician during this wartime wanted certain regiments to be transferred in places that they might be a little safer because he had interest in them. Well, when the Secretary of War, Edwin Stanton, received that order from the president, he refused to carry it out. And he said that the president was a fool. 
Well, Lincoln was told this and told what Stanton had said, and he replied, Well, if Stanton said I'm a fool, then I must be, for he's nearly always right. I'll see for myself. Well, the two men sat down and talked. The president quickly realized that his decision was a terrible mistake for the sake of the war and the effort, and without hesitation, he withdrew the order. We all have our personal agendas, that if we let them get in the way, they just might get in the way of what is best for others. If it wasn't for the personal sacrifices of the millions of individuals in this country during World War II, we might be, at this time, a fascist nation rather than a democracy. Today, my friends, we are a nation that stands at the brink of different crises, economic, racial, and health care inequities. In such dire situations, we need the extra help of our government to bring legislative reforms, to supplement financial deficits and inequities, but they cannot do it all. We must consider the sacrifices that we ourselves can make, what we will give up or what we will do for the sake of the others. There is a, a need for reform sometimes in our own attitude, and everything can start with us. We can't change the next person to us, but we can change ourselves. And we can regard people differently than perhaps we have. The humble are willing to put themselves on the line to preserve that which is truly right, not in our eyes, but in God's eyes. And lastly, these words I found from Andrew Murray. Andrew was a great South African missionary, and I think he puts it quite well. Humility is perfect quietness of heart. It is for me to have no trouble, never to be fretted or vexed or irritated or sore or disappointed. It is to expect nothing, to wonder at nothing that is done to me, to feel nothing done against me. It is to be at rest when nobody praises me and when I am blamed and when I am despised. It is to have a blessed home in the Lord where I can go in and shut the door and kneel to my Father in secret and be at peace as in a deep sea of calmness when all around me is troublesome. It is the fruit of the Lord Jesus Christ's redemptive work on Calvary's cross, manifest in those of his own who are definitely subject to the Holy Spirit. So my words on this day in closing are simple. Walk humbly with the Lord and with one another. For the humble walk is never walked alone, but that the Lord will be at your side. God's peace, God's kingdom is ours forever. Amen. I invite you to please stand as we turn again to our bulletin. We profess our faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father, he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. And let us pray. 
God of grace and God of glory. We praise you for the gift of this day and our life with it. And we seek your blessings upon that which is wrought in your presence, the living of our lives. May we live them in such a way that they are a true and good reflection of your Christ to those that we meet along the way. And, O oh Lord, though we each admire and seek to be glorified in your presence in our own simple and complex ways, give us a humble heart and a humble life that we might be benefited and lifted up by each other and not need to seek the glory for ourselves. Strengthen us, O oh Lord, to be your church in this place and wherever we may be to be your hands of the Christ's love to this world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for our nation that finds itself in many a difficult way, but yet is still so greatly blessed. Help us to reflect those principles of care and love for the neighbor in need, to seek that which is for the well-being of all of our citizens. Help us when we struggle with that because of our sin and our failings. And give us your healing presence upon those who serve in whatever capacity they are called to do so. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for this world, a world that you have given to us as a trust, to be stewards of, to care for it, to nurture it, and help it to flourish that it might support those who live upon it. We thank you for that privilege. Help us to be better stewards. We pray for the nations that are all afflicted by COVID-19. Help each of us to be those people that are responsible as we are able to care and love for our neighbor that may be in need greater than we. Bring your healing presence upon them this time of illness and affliction. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, O oh Lord, for those that are recovering from surgery, that those who are facing surgery. We pray this day and give thanks for the recovery of Benita. We pray for others, for Melissa, a friend of Tim's who is facing serious surgeries this week. We remember Donna and Evelyn and Dan, for our neighbor friend Autumn, for Ann, for JT and Miriam, for Nancy, for Bill and Willina, and for those that we remember in our hearts before you now. Render unto them a blessed healing and the blessings of a new and better day. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And we pray, O oh Lord, with thanksgiving in our hearts for the saints that have gone before us for those who have died in faith, trusting in the promise of your kingdom, for those who have shown us a more perfect walk in life. We remember those especially precious and dear to us now. Help us to always be a people of resurrection hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Into your hands, O oh Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy, through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We make preparation for receiving the gifts of God's very presence in our lives through the Lord's Supper. share the responses of the liturgy as printed. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you. Almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ, 
who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the church choirs of angels, with the church on earth and the host of heaven, we praise your name, we join their unending hymn, we share together spoken the words of the Sanctus. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. My friends, our Lord Jesus, on the night in which he was betrayed, he took some bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it, he gave it to his disciples. He said, take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took a cup. And when he had supped and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is the new covenant in my blood. It's shed for you. It's shed for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Together we pray as our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. All is prepared. You may come forth at the direction of Tim. You may be seated. the body and blood of Christ given for you. The body and blood of Christ given for you. you just take one and go back to your seat and we'll commune together. The body and blood of Christ given for you, Donna, Hazel. James, the body and blood of Christ given for you. Make sure you take one for her. Donna, the body and blood of Christ given for you. The old body and blood of Christ, it's given for you. Tim, the body and blood of Christ, given for you. Evelyn, the body and blood of Christ, given for you. It's given for you to take and eat. In the blood of Christ is shed for you. Please stand as you're able. The body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace now and forever. Amen. And together we pray. We give you thanks, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please turn in your hymnal to hymn number 712. 
Generally in our worship, we'd be singing a whole lot of stuff, but during COVID, they've suggested you don't sing because it kind of makes things go a little further. But uh, we sing with our masks on, and uh, I hope that this will help bring home the theme that I've shared with you this day. Hymn number 712. Lord, whose love in humble service bore the weight of human need, who upon the cross forsaken worked your mercies perfect deed. We, your servants, bring the worship, not a voice alone but heart, consecrating to your purpose every gift which you impart. Now you all sing along. Still your children wander homeless, still the hungry cry for bread, still the captives long for freedom, still in grief we mourn our dead. As you, Lord, in deep compassion, Heal the sick and free the soul. By your spirit, send your power to our world to make it whole. As we worship, grant us vision till your love's revealing light. In the height and depth and greatness dawns upon our quickened sight, making known the needs and burdens your compassion bids us bear. By your Spirit, send your power to our world. Uh, your abundant light to share. Called by worship to your service, forth in your dear name we go. To the child, the youth, the aged, love in living deeds to show. Hope and health, good will and comfort, counsel laid and peace we give. That your servants, Lord in freedom, may your mercy know and live. Please be seated. Let's see if I can turn this around and people can see who's here. Yeah, yeah make it easy that way. Because now it's your time. Your time to talk and share with us. First off, I'd like to see if there's anybody celebrating anything this week or in the recent past. Any anniversaries? Any birthdays? Birthday. Who has a Vanita? Yep, Vanita had a birthday this past week. She uh, finally reached the 60s, somewhere in the middle of the 60s. <laughs> yeah, we don't reveal those things; those are sacred. But she's—I'll give a simple update. My wife uh, is Vanita. She's not worshiping with us because she's recovering from surgery. She had a knee replacement. In less than a week, she's gone from a walker everywhere to a cane, and she's doing marvelous. She's uh, getting a little more independent. I actually left her for the first time today, and uh, she felt pretty confident in that. So we're thankful for that blessing of healing. Anybody else? An update on Dan. Yes, that's your cousin, right?
So there is some kind of recovery happening there, Evelyn. Oh, I'm thankful for that. And I hope for you, you're feeling better too. Good, good. Any other news in people's lives? Yes, ma'am. That's a, well, hope. Oh, we all we bear some heavy loads in life, but we don't do it alone, do we? We got to trust others and help around us. Thank you for being here, though. Come and join us anytime. We started at 11, but you came and you're good. It's all good. I'm thankful that you're here. Yeah, we'll talk a little bit. Anything else going on? Tim has something. We have something we wanted to report. I, I guess I can preface it with the conversation I had. Uh, we've all uh, recently lost our beloved organist, Wayne. Wayne Johnson died, and uh, he had a long battle with cancer, and he fought valiantly through it. He really did. But finally, he's found his peace, and we're thankful for that as well. There was no memorial service or anything for Wayne. That was his request. But often in the church, we like to remember people who have passed on by contributions to causes important to that person. One of Wayne's ministries he was involved in as an organist was he played for a local Hispanic congregation. And uh, he brought some of that music here. We had some uh, uplifting tunes that were shared as well from the organ. And uh, in our synod, the synod is our church-wide organization of the churches in South Carolina. Recently, our bishop, uh, Herman Yost, retired. And one of the things that Bishop Yost wanted to do was support a growing Hispanic ministry of Lutherans in the Columbia area. So they're raising funds in honor of Bishop Yos to uh, help build a church for a large worshiping community. And contributions have been made by churches all over. We haven't participated yet, but we want to, and the council wishes to do so. So we thought one thing that might be a tribute to our bishop retired, but also to honor Wayne, is since his ministry among the Hispanics was uh, important to him, that we might make contributions toward that gift for that congregation that could be used for the music ministry of the church. Uh, I talked to the bishop's office. They said we can't guarantee it would go for that, but we can certainly make note that it would be used for that way, and the congregation can decide, and they'd welcome any contributions toward that. Uh, the campaign is just about closing out, I spoke to uh, Hazel this week, who is uh, Wayne's relative, and uh, she thought it would be a great idea. I did receive from one of Wayne's cousins uh, a contribution that's already coming, a memorial to the church unsolicited, so we're thankful for that. So we wanted to share that with, with the congregation. Does that summarize it, Tim? Yes. What our sentiment was? and. Uh, Though we're few in number, we never know what our majority is for voting on anything, but uh, we'll express that as a sentiment. We'll invite you to make contributions to Trinity Lutheran Church, designate it for uh, Wayne, Wold, uh, Wayne, Wayne Johnson, and we'll make sure that that goes along with the $1,000 we're going to designate from church funds for that. We don't have a whole lot to give, but we want to participate in honoring those two persons. So that's just kind of some information for you today about a part of our extended ministry. And Tim, just briefly talk about what you did with some face masks. Um, yes, so I distributed the face masks to Maryville Elementary this uh, Wednesday. had a nice conversation with the principal at Maryville Elementary. She was happy and delighted to take them. Uh, talked to her a little bit more vaguely about providing some services to the elementary school that the uh, and one other outreach.
outreach ministry we're going to talk about perhaps next week when we have more detail is making our church available for after school tutoring and care for a small number of students uh, take our turn one day a week through the semester and invite other churches to participate uh, in reaching out to some kids that would have to just go home and sit on the front porch or in their house by themselves and those will be children from Maryville Elementary. So we'll give you more detail when we hear more about that. Is that it for the day? We are glad to have guests with us always. And generally, I have a few more people, but not today. That's just what it is. I invite you to please stand. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine on you, to be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.